Blue Stem, we were really excited to uh, be chosen for the Consider Corn Challenge for um, around this research we're working on. Um, it's it's great, not only uh, from a funding standpoint, we're, we were super um, excited to receive that funding from national corn growers, but um, more so the, the connection that we've been able to make with corn farmers on a state level. Welcome back to another episode of Illinois Corn TV. I'm Haley Bickelhop, your policy communications manager here at Illinois Corn. And I am so excited about this episode that we are offering you here today. We talked with Cameron Rylance, who's the Vice President of Government Affairs and Business Development at Blue Stem Biosciences. And that is a mouthful, but we are excited to dive into a new technology. As our corn farmers face a lot of different regulations and pushbacks on the electrification of our vehicle fleet, we often get concerns about corn demand. However, Cameron shared his thoughts about this new technology that they have that would increase corn demand by over a billion bushels. Now, we talked about its relations to the ethanol industry, existing infrastructure, and what farmers can expect. Let's go ahead and dive on in. Well, Cameron, thank you so much for joining us here today. I'm really excited to dive in to our conversation about a new technology that's really has the power to increase corn demand by a lot. So can you tell us a little bit more for people that aren't chemistry minded like myself, what blue stem is and um, what it can produce? Yeah, well, first off, Haley, thank you so much for having me. Um, blue stem at our core, blue stem biosciences, we're based in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, we are a renewable chemical company. So we started with the thesis that you could uh, derive a lot of value from existing ethanol infrastructure in the Midwest, uh, utilizing the best feedstock there is, corn, uh, to create chemicals other than ethanol. So through anaerobic fermentation, which is currently used to produce ethanol, we can produce chemicals um, that are currently made using petroleum. So if you think of a lot of clothing materials or the super absorbent polymer in a baby's diaper, that's all made out of acrylates. So acrylates are a really important chemical for a lot of end markets, and I can talk about that in more detail. But the point is, those are all currently made out of oil. And by utilizing the existing ethanol infrastructure across the Midwest, uh, we can address a much higher value end market for uh, these corn farmers. Perfect. Well, you said acrylates, and I kind of wanted to dive into that a little bit more, but they're, that's a big market, isn't it? Absolutely. So uh, there's a lot of important use cases for it um, in both the public and private sector. So if you think about the, the, the private sector, you have um, super absorbent polymers. I mentioned a baby's diaper. You can imagine that super absorbent polymer inside of it um, being corn-based, but having the same performance characteristics. That's really interesting. It's also produced in the Midwest. Um, meat packing sheets, so those absorbent sheets at the bottom of a pack of meat. Um, on the, the public sector, so Department of Defense, they're really interested in it for, for paints, coatings, adhesives. Um, it goes into to carbon fiber. Um, the, the most important number here, though, which I'm sure you'll be excited to hear, it's about a $25 billion end market, so um, larger than, than the entire U.S. ethanol market by itself. Definitely. No, that's a, that's um, music, I'm sure, to our corn farmers' ears as they were always looking for um, areas of demand for corn to be placed. Now, I'm not going to throw you for a loop, but I do have to insert our little joke section here, not to be corny. So our question is, what do you call a blue stem bioscience and success story? A <laughs> great day. That's a great day for everybody. Well, I'm <laughs> I'm excited to hear your answer. Well, that's a good answer. It's an amazing prog or progress in renewable chemicals. So <laughs> maize, amazing. Um, Corn maize. Okay. That yes. is an amazing day. Okay. <laughs> well, yeah, that that's one. one of our go-to puns, I feel like here. So yes. um, <laughs> one thing that I think is really interesting about your whole business model is the fact that you stated earlier that the infrastructure is already there because it is a process similar to ethanol creation. How does that um, contribute to your profitability and then even just the commercialization of this product? Yeah, so again, I'll, I'll just go back into the, the ethanol portion. It is very similar to ethanol. Uh, from the outside of a blue stem plant, it looks the exact same 
um, as ethanol. You have whole kernel corn coming in, you have product coming out along with other co-products. You have those, you know, distillers, dry grains, corn oil, and the like. Um, the only difference is that product, that uh, acrylic uh, being produced as opposed to ethanol. Um, and again, Bluestem was founded on this thesis of utilizing existing infrastructure. Um, and it's not just the fermentation equipment that'll be useful. The, the reason we'll be able to, to achieve um, economic you know, price parity with those existing petroleum-based acrylics, it's that existing rail loadout, the corn intake and processing equipment, the municipal waste water, um, that EPA emission certificate, all of that stuff that sits on uh, a bioethanol facility today Blue stem will be able to utilize to be commercially successful. Definitely. And we're talking a lot about corn farmers because we're Illinois corn, but you have a relationship with not just Illinois corn, but national corn. Um, can you share a little bit about that? Yeah. So, Blue stem, we were really excited to uh, be chosen for the Consider Corn Challenge for um, around this research we're working on. Um, it's, it's great, not only uh, from a funding standpoint, we were super. Um, excited to receive that funding from national corn growers, but um, more so the, the connection that we've been able to make with corn farmers on a state level um, and nationally. I'm based here in DC um, and that reception has been great. I mean, it really put us on the map as somebody that, that the corn growers look to as a, as a, a possible new end market. And that's, that's been really uh, exciting for us as well. And now it's time for Just the Facts with Clay brought to you by PCM. We have enough data now that we can really dive in and pick it apart and going one step further into our data trend of mostly pre-plant nitrogen being the most profitable system we see that in bad years where overall profitability is average or less than mostly pre-plant and mostly side dress are more likely to result in higher profitability and, and as farmers very well know um, the weather patterns are much more unpredictable year to year and if we're able to use those nitrogen timing systems to have the, them better prepared and more profitable, then that's something that we're seeing our farmers move more and more towards. But yeah, I guess as we're talking about corn and continuing our corn conversation, why, why corn? There's a lot of other feedstocks available in you know, the United States, but why is corn the product you're going towards? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd like to say we've chosen corn as a feedstock for, for a few reasons, but uh, at the end of the day, the biggest is that, that corn producer across the Midwest. Um, we're confident that by bringing that new source of demand uh, for corn, it's not going to create a uh, scarcity that some people bring up sometimes. Uh, corn growers have always been able to meet that demand through uh, on-farm ingenuity. Um, also in DC, we've gotten some pushback on the terms, you know, climate change and decarbonization. Um, but where we found a lot of uh, good reception is really by highlighting the sustainability of the farmer. You know, corn growers have been sustainable um, producing corn for over a century um, and have continued to produce more with less while reducing that carbon intensity of that corn every year. Um, if we're able to combine that sustainability on farm ingenuity um, with existing ethanol infrastructure uh, and our new biology, we're going to unlock some incredible new end markets for corn um, while still promoting uh, rural agricultural uh, sustainability um, and U.S.-based supply chains. Well, it all sounds really, really great to me, but I have to ask, have you been talking to farm or corn farmers at all? Like, what is the reception that you've gotten back? Yeah, we have. Um, so one of my first jobs when I joined the Blue Stem team, um, we were working on a Department of Defense project uh, that really wanted us to, to wrap in stakeholder engagement. Um, I'm from the South, but I was fortunate enough to be able to go on a seven state road show across the Midwest meeting, uh, you know, the, the state corn growers associations, corn farmers, as well as farm bureaus and some other organizations. And that really got us connected. And, and when we started on that, uh, you know, ground level on, on, you know, that grassroots campaign um, to try to meet with as many corn producers as we could, we found that, um, you know, corn producers, they, they, they want to make more product. They want to sell more product. And at the end of the day, if, if they can, uh, you know, benefit the chemical market and, and help sustainable chemistry, uh, get a foothold in the U S they're really excited about that. And, and, uh, I think we're really aligned in that sense. No, that's really great to hear. I do want to end really quite quick with a quote. I once heard, um, your CEO and founder, 
Bill Hagstrom say, he said, if you want to get off a barrel of oil, you have to get on a bushel of corn. I thought that really summed up, um, you know, maybe some of your thoughts and the principles behind the company, but wanted to hear your thoughts. Yeah, absolutely. That that quote has been with us since the beginning of Blue Stem, um, very early days um, that get off a barrel of oil and onto a bushel of corn. Um, I, I mean, again, we have seen corn compete with the lowest value portion of a barrel of oil. That's gasoline, right? Um, it's competed with gasoline at the pump for, for over two decades now. Um, and now we're trying to give it the ability to compete with the highest value fraction of a barrel of oil, those petrochemicals. Um, just to, to put into perspective, that $25 billion end market of acrylics, that's equivalent to about 1.8 billion bushels of corn demand per year. Um, so that's a huge amount of corn, a huge amount of chemical market that we need to address. Um, and we're really excited to be doing it with a sustainable feedstock like corn. Perfect. And we are too. <laughs> so yeah. keep up the great work. And we are really excited to um, talk to you today about this. And maybe in the future, when we have some more um, things in the work, we can continue to have this conversation. So thank you, Cameron. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This has been another episode of Illinois Corn TV. Thank you so much for tuning in and be sure to subscribe on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. We'll see you next week.